this text is uh, included in the background prose reading of the paper modern indian writing in english translation i read out most famous undelivered speech by b r ambedkar these passages will explain the argument of this document on the basis of the argument ambedkar makes in this uh, undelivered speech you may further explore the background topics caste gender and resistance and then apply the understanding of this text together with concepts or background concepts to the texts that are included in your syllabus for example the story shroud by premchan or the novel by kalyan rao the untouchable spring and then there are references to caste structure in several stories and poems so this uh, understanding will be part of your skill of application analysis and synthesis that is these higher order steps of thinking of uh, cognitive development in the domain of uh, learning which is expected from the students of higher education so i read uh, the excerpts it is pity that caste system today has its defenders the defen defenses are many it is defended on the ground that the caste system is but another name for division of labor and if division of labor is necessary feature of every civilized society then it is argued that there is nothing wrong in the caste system now the first thing that is to be urged against this view is that the caste system is not merely a division of labor it is also a division of laborers civilized society undoubtedly needs division of labor but in no civilized society is division of labor accompanied by this unnatural division of laborers into water tight compartments the caste system is not merely a division of laborers which is quite different from division of labor it is a hierarchy in which the divisions of laborers are graded one above the other 
in no other country is the division of labor accompanied by this gradation of labor there is also a third point of criticism against this view of the caste system this division of labor is not spontaneous it is not based on natural aptitudes social and individual efficiency requires us to develop the capacity of an individual to the point of competency to choose and to make his own career this principle is violated in the caste system in so far as it involves an attempt to appoint tasks to individuals in advance selected not on the basis of trained original capacities but on that of the social status of the parents looked at from another point of view this stratification of occupations which is the result of the caste system is positively pernicious industry is never static it undergoes rapid and abrupt changes with such changes an individual must be free to change his occupation without such freedom to adjust himself to changing circumstances it would be impossible for him to gain his livelihood now the caste system will not allow hindus to take to occupations where they are wanted if they do not belong to the them by heredity if a hindu is seen to star rather than take to new occupation not assigned to his caste the reason is to be found in the caste system by not permitting readjustments of occupations caste becomes a direct cause of much of the unemployment we see in the country as a form of division of labor the caste system suffers from another serious defect the division of labor brought about by the caste system is not a division based on choice individual sentiments individual preferences has no place in it 
it is based on the dogma of predestination considerations of social efficiency would compel us to recognize that the greatest evil in the industrial system is not so much poverty and the suffering that it involves as the fact that so many persons have callings which make no appeal to those who are engaged in them. Such callings constantly provoke one to aversions, ill will and those desire to evade.